Welcome to a quick business monitor demo. I'm about to log into our out of the box framework called Business Space, and then we'll look at dashboard capabilities. I have several widgets on the dashboard. I have three KPI widgets that you'll see, and then an instance widget, and then an alert widget. Our KPIs are real time values, they have color coded ranges of operation. They have target values, and then they have actuals um, updated potentially every few seconds. The ranges can just be a visual reference, or they can drive alerts based on the values and the ranges that we've defined. In the instance view, we're looking at detailed data about processes, claims, loans, orders, transactions that we're monitoring. And then the alerts are based on either KPIs or individual instances, business situations that have been defined that we need to know about. These can send emails, they can have detailed data, they can kick off other services, or they can just appear on the dashboard. The data that we have available in the instance view depends on what we're monitoring, of course, but the user can determine what subset of that they need to see for their role. So they can sort and search any of these columns dynamically and then save those if needed for their own views. Reports are continuously being updated. Users can create new reports on the fly at any time. They can be defined or they can have some drill down capabilities. I'm going to show you a couple of drill down options here. We're going to look at drilling down by department, those departments that have placed orders for these products in our little sample here. Here's a cross tab view as well as the column view. Hold the cursor over the column to see the actual value. And now I'll just refresh the widget to go back up to the highest level view. And then we'll drill down by time. First, it'll start with a, a view of all of the orders and the years that we have. And these drill downs can be configured to be automatic at different levels. Now I'm drilling into months here. We'll see all the orders placed in a particular month and reflect the department that has placed the orders. Now we're drilling back up. We'll drill up one more time just to show you that capability is there. Lots of different options on how to present the data to an end user, uh, different chart types, formatting choices that you have. Now I'm going to take this example and in another type of report, drill down and filter a detailed list of instances based on the column of report data. So I click on pins here and say show me the instances of those types of orders and the list is instantly filtered for me. Some other examples here of report types. Here's a heat map. These are based on Cognos visualizations that are available. And then another type of bar chart. If you want to get into more detailed formatting options, then the Cognos tools are included and available if you want to go to that depth. We've been looking at real-time KPIs. These are the historical views of those same KPIs. This is order amount total being tracked over time. We see where it crosses the target value that we had set. We see the color coding of the ranges uh, mirrors that that was set earlier. Now I'm selecting time ranges that I want to view. These can be set by default or you can change them on the fly to look at a particular period uh, of interest. You'll see the range names and the values show up here if you get to the boundary of the layer or the range that has been defined. can change the number of sampling points that I'm showing on the display at any time. An entirely new dashboard view for a different user. So they've selected a different set of widgets to view for their role and yet another example. So the business user has lots of power to determine what they see. In a different example, I'm monitoring a BPM process here and this one has to do with hiring. So I'm looking at KPIs for the cost of performing the process steps 
and then transitioning to measurements about the time, how long the steps take to execute. So these are in minutes. And then the outcome of the process, how many candidates were approved, how many did we had to go for second level approval, how many were rejected and so on. And of course, we're collecting report data on all this. So now we're slicing and dicing the data about those hiring processes that we've run by department, by title, by hiring manager, by pay level, by location, the duration by pay level, lots of different options here. Another dashboard page shows us a picture of the process and some KPIs about the steps that are running, the cost, wait time, execution time, and so on. Now we've overlaid real-time process data on a map, and these images can be of anything, and then the real-time data gets overlaid on that. Another example, file transfer. This data is coming from Sterling Connect Direct. We're showing daily file transfer status. In this case, how many things have been transferred over the past time period. Process uh, transfer errors, drilling up and down into the reports about those file transfer activities that have been going on. Then um, down at the bottom, we have some of the detailed instances of those transfer processes, and we're going to drill down into the lower level steps or the individual items that were transferred. In this case, we're looking at the names of the files, the source file, and some details about that. Another example here where we see the actual name of the, the source and destination files and some of the IDs that were available if we need to get to that level of tracking. A history page on sent and received files by node. Again, hovering over the columns of data to see the real-time value. Now we've transitioned to looking at Sterling File Gateways transfer activities that have been happened. So these are files that are being processed by Sterling File Gateway, and we have lots of detail on the transfer process steps that have happened. In this case, there are 30-something steps that have occurred to transfer these files and route them as appropriate. So the route is now complete. Some reports about that file transfer activity. Producers and consumers sent received. And now we're looking at some KPI history for the files sent over the last quarter. Showing data points weekly. And then there's another KPI that we're looking at at the bottom. File sent monthly. Looking at that for the past year. Tracking that. An entirely another example here on looking at how Monitor connects information across different systems. This process touches five different systems, and so Monitor is providing us an end-to-end -end view of that tracking across these different systems. This is not a managed process. We're just looking at the process steps and posting real-time data onto the display. So using that, we can understand how far along the process has achieved completion and if there's any issues along the way. Under the covers, of course, we're tracking data for the reporting that we might need to see about what else has happened. We'll log on here to the mobile application that's available with Business Monitor and look at how the KPIs appear on an iPhone. This is a bar chart rendering of a KPI chart, and so you see the actual value in black. The target line is the vertical white line. Here's a user selecting the KPIs that they want to view. These are the model KPIs, and I can make these selections as an authorized user. A different visual rendering of the some of the same KPIs that we're looking at here. The actual value is also shown as well as shown on the needle. All the ranges, of course, match everything on the, the regular browser. Now we're transitioning over to alerts. So we're seeing the detail of an alert here. Candidate rejections, these are for our hiring process or above normal. Now we want to get into the detail of that, take some other actions. We can scroll through the available actions.
Now I'm going to look at iPad. In this case, not just KPIs and alerts, but actually looking at the entire dashboard. In this case, we formatted the information a little bit differently based on uh, what we want to see on the iPad itself. At the top, we have instances of the hiring requisitions that are out. And then at the bottom, we have some KPIs. I'm filtering this KPI list by showing the instances of candidate rejections. So here are all those that met that criteria. Reports as seen on the iPad as I'm holding horizontally and scrolling the entire iPad screen. Same reports that you saw on the, the browser-based dashboard. Now I'm flipping over vertical and scrolling back up. An example of the process diagram view that we saw in the browser-based dashboard and looking at the KPIs that were available about the BPM process running. Here's the freeform map diagram that we used earlier. And then an entirely another dashboard view seen vertically and horizontally on the iPad. So some different options there. And then back to the original. Last thing we want to show is uploading some data to Watson Analytics out of our instance view. And the first idea here is to let Watson explore the data and then create some exploration views. Without doing anything, it looks at the instance data and gives us some interesting facts. And so it picks out things like the top user ID by the item quantity. Based on the data that we've uploaded, it looks at some of those relationships and shows us things that it thinks might be important. And so we can use these as reference in creating some different views of the data that we um, maybe weren't aware of or maybe some relationships that we um, might want to highlight. So this is one of the views. We're going to create a new exploration. I'm clicking New here. And then we're going to use the um, ability of Watson Analytics to type in the question using uh, just some words that we know are in, in the data. And then it, it will look and reformat that question and give us some choices that, that um, make sense based on the actual names of the fields that we have uploaded. So it's refined our query and we're going to select one of these. So there's the order total amount over month by category. I'm going to change this area into a bar. There's some of the dynamic things that you can do just from the browser-based view of this uploaded data. I'm going to exclude the July column. Make some of the choices in the charting options down here. Change this over to an area chart again. Click on July, exclude that data. I want to see this instead of as an absolute, I want to see this as a stack percentage chart. So there's the view of that. I'm going to use that as one of my new explorations. Now if we create another one, use the same sort of technique. We get the refined query and choose one of these item quantity by user ID and now we have this diagram that shows us a visual reference based on the quantities and the user IDs and we're excluding a couple of these just to see how it shifts around the view of the data and we can dynamically shift the ranges on either end to see what that does to the uh, resulting output that we get so we're trimming the top and the lower ends of the data. So another option there. So we're going to switch over and look at predictive relationships within the data. And again, without us doing anything, Watson has analyzed this and found some interesting targets with some uh, predictors that were found among the data that we uploaded. So this is looking at relationships 
in the data. And it allows us to choose a single or multiple fields to do this comparison. And then shows us some visuals that gives us indications of how strong the relationship is. So what influences the item number? What influences the total amount of the order? What influences the type of product that is ordered? What other fields? And what the predictive strength of those is. So here user ID drives the item type, predictive strength, and so on. So this will help you discover some relationships that you might not otherwise understand from your data and do it without um, any heavy lifting. So this was exported from the instance view um, right within Monitor. This concludes the quick demo.